How you guys doing? Once again, I'm Chris Ignato. Now, let me tell you a quick story. Last night, my girlfriend Ivy and I went up to a friend's house, okay? And uh, it's not in this area. And before we came home, Ivy was like, hey, you know, you never come up in this area. You've been wanting to get out and do some herping and stuff. It's a good time of year. Why don't we look around and see if we can find something? So we did. We didn't really find anything. But we did find this one area. And we could tell there was a vernal pool or something in the area because you could hear the odd toad or spring peeper singing every now and then. So we're looking around, didn't really find much. But I found several toads that were all coming from a certain direction. So I followed that direction into a field over a couple of hills and found a puddle. In that puddle were some toads mating. So I tried to film them, but I've got better footage. And then I see what looks like a damselfly larva and I'm ignoring it, and then finally I'm like, well, I'll just grab it for a second, take a look, maybe it's a different species. And as I look closer, I realize it's a fairy shrimp. Now, they're common, but I never see them. I've been wanting to see these things since I was 12 years old, okay? Finally, I found a place with millions of these things, okay? Really excited. So, I want you to check out the footage. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, it actually gets really difficult at some points to film because there's so many cyclops and daphnia and water fleas and all that stuff, seed shrimp. And uh, so it clouds up the, the view. But please, I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you like it, hit like, subscribe for more videos, and uh, please feel free to question or comment because I love when people interact with my videos. Hope you guys enjoy and uh, check it out. In a little bit of a string of pearls situation, characteristic of toad type of environment. Oh my god, I've been looking for these forever. Look at them just following my flashlight beam. So cool. Wow, they are very attracted to light. Okay, so I had to put some of these fairy shrimp in a container to make it easier to film because as you may have noticed <laughs> the water footage I got in a vernal pool is just a little bit overwhelming so if you look closely <laughs> it's almost impossible to count but they've got 11 pairs of, of legs there that they use for swimming they're shaped like paddles see them pulsating almost undulating okay and they generally always swim not always, but they, for the most part, they swim upside down along on their backs, similar to back swimmers. Look at this one here. Okay, see that blue thing moving back and forth? That's the brood sac. That's where the eggs are. Okay, and when they lay their eggs, they just pretty much drop them. They sink down to the bottom of the vernal pool, and eventually the vernal pool dries up. And they can stay dormant for like 30 years, literally. And then what happens is when the conditions are right, the pool fills up with water and just the right amount of sunlight will cause those eggs to hatch. And fairy shrimp can handle several different qualities of water, which is pretty cool. I figured they'd be very sensitive, but they're, they're a little bit hardy, believe it or not. There's a seed shrimp swimming by. As you can tell, there's a lot of cyclops and daphnias and whatnot in this little water sample I've got. Um, I love that blue on them. Now the males, which right now I'm having trouble telling this, but I remember reading at some point that the males have a second pair of antenna that they use for grasping their female counterparts when they're mating. I can't tell. I can't see any of that right now. Amazing creatures. And they're actually really graceful. I'm absolutely amazed by fairy shrimp. I just think they're so cool. Where it is people out in the deserts and stuff would sometimes like heat up their water for tea and leave it out overnight, you know, the next day they wouldn't get to it till sometime in the afternoon. And they'd find these things swimming around in their water and they're like, what on earth? How did that happen, you know? But sometimes it's 
you know, just needs a few hours of sunlight and some warm water, and those eggs will hatch. And as I said, those eggs could be dormant for 30 years before they actually hatch. So it's impressive. Now these are crustaceans, you know, um, so they're related to shrimps and lobsters and all that kind of stuff because those are crustaceans, you know, crabs and all. But I love their little eye stalks. You know, I've always been a big fan of eye stalks on shrimp and crabs and whatnot. You know, fairy shrimp feed on detritus, decaying plant vegetable matter, usually found on the bottom of the vernal pools. And they're not carnivorous as far as I know at all. But maybe they are. They do feed on organic matter. Um, maybe they feed on decaying animal life too so I don't know but if, whether they're vegetarian if they're omnivores or whatnot but they do all sorts of stuff in the water they'll do somersaults and <laughs> barrel rolls and they're really fun to watch love these guys so cool and as you look closely you will see little cyclops and daphneas and seed shrimp and this little water sample this was all a puddle that was formed by the rain Really impressive, aren't they? Little filter feeders. Yeah, how cool is that, man? These fairy shrimp are so attracted to light.